I know that cyber isn't square in your purview, but cyber attacks are on the rise. You closely follow technology. And I'm curious how you're watching this unfold and if there's anything the FCC might take on to ensure our networks are more secure and resilient. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, cybersecurity is really an important part of our national and economic security, and the risks we face are only growing. I think government from the FCC on up uh, is going to have to work more closely with private industry to make sure that we have the tools to address these challenges because they're not going away. And uh, today's news is just a demonstration of that. Now, how will the Biden administration start a new chapter for the FCC? What will change? Well, I think what's changed a lot in Washington is the recognition that broadband is no longer nice to have. It's need to have for everyone everywhere. And, you know, this pandemic has demonstrated that with painful clarity because we've all been told to go home you know, work if you can online, go to school online, you know, have your doctor's appointments online. And so nobody's got a fair shot in this country if they don't have internet access at home. We've got to figure out how to make sure that that access gets to every household and every person, no matter who they are or where they live. Now, the ruling on net neutrality was perhaps the most controversial ruling out of the FCC uh, under President Trump. And I'm curious, you're on the record opposing the net neutrality rollback. Would you propose the FCC reimpose net neutrality? So you're absolutely right. I support net neutrality. And I opposed the last administration's rollback of our net neutrality rules. So here there's a short term and a long term. And in the short term, the news is actually out of California. Because in 2017, when the FCC stepped out of net neutrality, states stepped in like California. And just two weeks ago, a judge in California said that California's own net neutrality policies can now go into effect. So that's big news. But in the long term, we're going to need a national policy on this issue. And it's something that I intend to work with at the FCC and also with our uh, folks in Congress, because I think, once again, that neutrality should be the law of the land. Now, we're, I'm still at home. I believe you're, you might still be at home. So <laughs> yes, it's a good time to check in table. on. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Um, it's a good time to check in on America's broadband policy and what you're doing to close the digital divide. You know, at this point, we've got kids across the country who've been home for a year. Um, What's, what's it going to be like uh, as we all start to come back online? And how concerned are you about the folks who may have been left behind? Yeah, we have a digitally disconnected population in this country. So I'm really proud of something that the FCC did about a week ago. We put in place something called the Emergency Broadband Benefit. It's really historic. It's our nation's largest effort at broadband affordability in our history. We set aside $3.2 billion, Congress helped us do that, to make sure that low-income households could get online. The support is $50 a month for those households, so people who've experienced job loss, who've applied for unemployment insurance, or who are on Medicaid, or have Pell Grants, are all eligible. And it's a way to make sure that households don't lose access to the world online during this crisis. And I think it's really important that we build programs like this because we don't solve our nation's digital divide without having programs that address affordability. And this emergency broadband benefit is a really big one. I'm really proud of the effort we've made at the FCC and I expect it will be available in a few short weeks. So if confirmed, you'd be the first woman to permanently lead the FCC. We are all watching your future very closely. Is there any steer you can give us? What kind of conversations have you had with the White House? Are you going to be the chair of the FCC? <laughs> uh, well, you know, that's, that's above my pay grade, but I am doing my best right now. It is a privilege and honor to lead the Federal Communications Commission. And, you know, communications technology is keeping us all connected in this crisis. It's really important. So 
Look, uh, you know, there are uh, a lot of women, a lot of uh, young girls out there who may, may, you know, there's concerns about backsliding, there's concerns about being left behind um, in this pandemic, especially if they didn't have that digital access. How much of a priority will that be for you? Well, um, I think we got to figure out how to get everyone online everywhere and we've got to start using every tool we have in Washington to make it happen. That's something I'm working on at the FCC. And I'm especially aware that there are students who fall into this homework gap, who have internet access at home, but are locked out of the virtual classroom. And the good news is Congress is right now looking at legislation to help with that problem too. So I think we've got a, a lot of progress that we're gonna see in the next few months and I'm really excited to be leading it. So speaking of progress, the FCC ruled that SpaceX is eligible for subsidies for supplying rural broadband service from its fleet of satellites. These satellites are now already aloft. Um, I'm curious if you think this is a good use of public subsidy and when the FCC will complete this review of whether funding SpaceX and other, you know, some of these proposed um, recipients is an appropriate use of funding. Yeah, so these are preliminary decisions that, uh, that we're taking a look at now. But I think, you know, the bigger point here is that we need to start addressing these issues of the disconnected using new technologies. If, you know, it had always been that we only reached people with fiber facilities in the ground, I think we have to be open to new technologies like fixed wireless and low earth orbiting satellites because some of those new technologies coming on board can deliver really high speeds at lower latencies than in the past. And I think we can get a lot of people more connected in rural areas a lot faster if we open ourselves to some of those opportunities like the one you described. All right, uh, at the moment, the commission is 2-2, Democrats uh, versus Republicans. You know, I know That's you're working true. on, we talked about broadband, <laughs> working on, on 5G. What will you be able to accomplish um, with a Democratic majority? Well, on the 5G front, I don't think that this issue is especially partisan. A good 5G plan involves both spectrum and security. And I am working really hard with my colleagues to bring more mid-band spectrum to market so carriers have the airwaves they need to deploy. And then we're also working really hard to make sure that our nation's networks don't have vulnerable foreign equipment in them that could uh, open us up to surveillance problems. So we are working on spectrum and security, and it's my hope that uh, we can make progress on both in the short term, regardless of the composition of the agency.